Today, I'm going to show you how to go from the start of using Say Intentions to receiving your tax instructions in Say Intentions. So with that said, let's go. Now, it's worth noting that if you use VATSIM or any online network or are, are fully um, sort of confident with using ATC services, this video is not really for you. This here is solely for the purpose of anyone new who is unsure in ATC, or I see a lot of questions within the Discord, uh, the same intention to Discord um, community, um, with a little bit of confusion in how to get started. So this is the video for you. Now, at this point, we're going to assume you've already signed up for Say Intentions. So you've literally just got an account, nothing else here. And the first thing you need to do once you've logged in is down here in account settings, just make sure that in the Discord handle, you put your Discord name in there. Okay. And Discord is the perfect way to get any help, uh, ask any questions, um, and uh, if you have any bugs to report, um, you know, you, you find any issues, you can report it in there. Uh, but do include your handle here because it will help the moderators um, and the staff members find your account much easier from Discord into your Say Intentions account uh, far quicker. Once we're here though and you're ready to go, you want to go to Downloads on the left hand side. And literally all we're going to do from here is download the latest version of Say Intentions, okay, the application here. If you use VR, you can come back to that later. I don't, so I don't use this, but you can use it in VR as well, okay? But make sure that you download the main application, okay? Once you've done that and it's installed, then let's move on to the next stage. Okay. So the Say Intentions application, okay. every time you run this, it is going to go back and check for the latest update. So do not worry if you um, about checking what the, the current latest version is via the website. Okay. If any changes, they'll be announced on Discord. But even if you don't check there, this will auto check for any updates and install them um, every time you run it. So the first thing you want to do before you do anything else when we get here is go over to settings. Okay, now in settings, you need to make sure at the top in the account section you have your account details. Okay, the input is uh, the language that you speak or the closest language that you speak, and then down here in the sim brief, you have your sim brief um, username. Okay, this is your username, this is not your pilot ID, this is your username. And we will come back to that um, later on. But essentially, it's the name you use to log in, okay, as a username. Do not use your pilot ID that other ATC services do require. This is your username, okay. It's the one thing that trips a lot of people up, okay, when they put it in here. And the reason why we're going to use this is we'll show you later, okay. But just for now, import your username. On the right side, we've got a few options. Student pilot mode, when you tick that, it's going to be more, much more lenient ATC wise. Again, they're not going to shout at you as much, etc., etc. Uh, the squelch effect, um, it's just a sound effect, whether you like that or not. And the same with the ground loop, it's just a sound effect, whether you like that or not. Completely up to you. Um, tick it on, tick it off, try it, see what you think. Always screw up mode Charlie. Um, I have this on uh, some aircraft, it works, some doesn't, uh, it's hit and miss. If you use V Pilot, you'll know. Um, there's a similar feature in this. Essentially, it just means that uh, your transponder is always on in say intentions. It's nothing major. It's not going to break it. Uh, yes, it's not realistic, but I always have that tick just to make sure that they can always see me. Always on top. Uh, well, it just means that the application is always on top. So if you try to go back to the sim, this application will still remain in the foreground and you can see that. Okay. Identity. Now, identity, this is how ATC is going to know you. Now, I don't know if you have to completely fill this out every time for every flight, but I do. 
okay if you're flying GA all right you can put the tail number in here there's a few options on the different aircraft but again I don't tend to fill this bit in but the option here if I'm flying GA I will change the tail number and if the aircraft has a placard in the the flight deck in the cockpit um, showing the tail number this will change it to whatever you put in here so say intentions will change that which does help when you're flying along you can quickly visualize that if you forget what the tail number is an ATC call you down here um, you can also then change to how ATC call you so the long call sign usually um, if you fly airliner uh, these will be the same okay and uh, so the long call sign is in this instance from when I last used it was Golf Foxtrot Sierra Tango Romeo and the short call sign was Golf Tango Romeo so we just shortened it. Airliners well if you look here United 1423 would go in there and United 1423 would go in there you can't really shorten it okay easy as that um, from there. Headset Headset's going to be um, obviously your microphone input. So what you where you want your microphone to be coming from, and then once you've selected that, you can record, talk, and then play it back. So we will test it, and the output will where do you want to hear the sound? Because you may have sounds coming from or the, the sim sounds coming from your your speakers, but you might want the ATC sounds to come into your headset, and you can do that from in here. Okay, and then test the speakers. Controls. Well, controls are if you. I don't have everything plugged in at this moment in time, and that's why you don't see that many things in here. But you can, um, or make sure you do. I should say, if anything, the one thing you should do um, is the uh, com radio push to talk. You need to select a uh, button for that you need to assign something so if you, you would select the com radio push to talk and then you would press the button of your choice that you want to push to talk this is the button that when you hold it down it opens the mic it keys the mic and then you can talk and then once you release that button um, that then closes the mic off and it sends that that phrase into ATC to hear you okay so it's super important if you do anything you do assign this one. The intercom is more so for um, the uh, tour guide, but that's for a later video, possibly from that. Multiplayer, um, again, personal preference multiplayer. The chatter is there for uh, if you want, like sort of the the traffic chatter in the background going on. Um, mine's disabled. Um, because you get a lot of AI ATC um, or you'll get if you have canned only or is just like sort of random voices that the system spits out for you but again they're never in that area at the moment it's a bit strange so I have it off but canned is that canned and multiplayer is you'll get the the voices AI voices and you'll also get any multiplayer um, who any real person who's on this uh, same tensions network but bear in mind if you do that one I believe that if you are say um, landing into LA and someone contacts London Control you're going to hear some kind of response from a London Control you know, which is nowhere near you so I have it disabled but in multiplayer I have this enabled um, and that allows anyone that's in a I, I, from my understanding is within a 30 nautical mile the box around you that if they're on the air they will hear you and you will hear them okay so is that intercom I know we touched on it um, briefly a second ago but this is like a tour guide they do have tours it's really cool I, I do tell you to to check this out and um, there's different tour guides who as you're flying along um, and you're passing certain landmarks or certain areas, we'll start talking and, and giving you some information regarding that area. Um, so it's a really neat way of, of, of bringing new life into the sim and actually going on a tour, flying um, VFR in, in light aircraft and looking around. But that's not obviously for the scope of this video. 
Um, miscellaneous, well, this is now Active Sky integration. If you have Active Sky, you can use this uh, area here and it will then read the weather. Say intentions can't read Microsoft Flight Sim weather because of a servo locked it off and hid it, and we all know what it did with the weather. Um, so it can't read it, it takes the weather from real world. And sometimes there was a slight discrepancy for that. But they can read Active Sky's weather. So if you use Active Sky, and for example, if you're using um, historical weather, you know, this will pull at it. So really handy there. An experimental, um, I wouldn't go and worry about this here for the time being anyway. So easy as that um, uh, in settings. And if it, once that's done, we're pretty much ready to go. So let's now go and head over to the next section. Okay, so um, we mentioned you need to put your Sun Brief username um, in the application. This is because um, when you IFR, it is going to check your latest Sim Brief uh, flight plan and it's going to pull that one through when you do call for your IFR. So it's important that we do file the uh, flight plan within Sim Brief before we get going. Um, and simply, once you, if you don't have an account yet, and I don't go into great detail on Sim Brief because this is not the scope of this video, but once you've got Sim Brief uh, accounted up, you go to a new flight. Uh, we need to then generate this. In this example, we had uh, Delta 1444 out of Kennedy to Boston. We're going to be in the uh, 737 PMDG. It's going to pull all this information through um, that we need for our flight for us. Once we're happy with everything, we're just going to click on Generate. That's then going to generate our flight plan into SimBrief. Um, and away we go. Super simple, super easy. Uh, same intentions in theory now have our uh, flight plan um, in their system. So with that said, let's now head over to the aircraft and um, get the fun part going, I guess. Okay, so here we are, sat at JFK. Very, very default scenery. So ignore the scenery around you because it isn't right. It's broke right now. But yeah. So the first thing we want to do is, once you've got a up ready to go, we need to get the weather for uh, Kennedy here. So we tune to ATIS. Uh, you can even check the charts. You can check the app, uh, comlink, how you want to do it. And you can dial it in again, however you want to do that. For me, though, I just like to click on the comlink. It should dial it in there. We should hear it. V0 at 6. Visibility 10. Sky conditions. Few at 4500 feet. Broken at 15000 feet. Broken at 25000 feet. Temperature 20. Dew point 8. Altimeter 29 or 72. Arriving and departing runways 13 left, 13 right, 4 left, 4 right. Visual approach is in use. Advise on course heading altitude and if flight following is requested. Read back all runway and hold short instructions. VFR departures contact clearance delivery on 135.05 advise on initial contact you have information Papa. John F. Kennedy International Airport information Papa. 19 or 51 Zulu. Wind 050 at 6. Visibility 10. Sky conditions, few at 4500 feet. Okay, so now listen to the weather, all right? There's a few things you need to make a note of from there. One is the altimeter, which was 2972. So we're going to set that now to 2972. And the other one, obviously, it gave us all the runways in use and what we could expect. And last one was information PAPA. This is important because we need to tell the clearance controller that we have that information on board so they know we are aware of the weather information and what's going on around the airfield. Okay, so normally you would uh, also when you call for your clearance give your your location. Excuse me, your location at the airfield because I don't know where I am because it's all default. Uh, sadly, I can't do that. But the way I'm going to do this will still get us by um, from there. So I have tuned to the clearance controller one three five decimal zero five zero. So let's now uh, call them up. Clearance, uh, hello Delta fourteen forty four. 
is a type 737 800. We have information PAPA and we request IFR clearance to Boston. Delta 1444 Kennedy clearance cleared to Boston. Radar vectors merit then is filed. Climb and maintain 21000. Departure on 135.9er. Squawk 5246. Expect runway 04 left for departure. Information PAPA is current. Uh, clear to Boston, radar vectors merit, then is filed. Uh, cloud maintain 21000, departures 135.9er, squawk 5246, and we can expect 04 left, uh, Delta 1444. Delta 1444, read back correct. Expect runway 4 left. Contact ground on 125.05. Ground 125.05, Delta 1444, see ya. Okay, so. A few things we got from this then, okay, that they told us, they gave us the squawk code, uh, which was 5246, I believe, so we're going to put that in, 5246, okay, um, we're going to get radar vectors out of the airfield today, so if we're departing from 04, I don't know the exact heading, you would dial that in for the runway, I'm just going to put that in, and they gave us a straight out uh, heading or climb, I should say altitude of 210, which happens to be our cruise today. So I'm going to put that in there. <clears throat> okay, so at this point now, we have a clearance, okay, from uh, the clearance uh, controller. One thing of note when you do that, make sure you say IFR clearance, okay? So either VFR clearance, but in this example, it's IFR clearance. We want IFR clearance to destination okay you can't go wrong then it will check sim brief for that ifr or that flight plan ifr flight plan that you filed so i'm going to now complete the setting up this aircraft and then come back to you when we're ready for the push and start okay so we're back we've got everything set up um we are now basically ready for push and start so we're going to call for our push and start um, and then get this show on the road. We're currently tuned to ground um, as requested, which is 125.05, so let's call that. And again, just to point out, you would normally give your location on the airfield, but again, unfortunately, I can't do that. So, Delta 1444 is uh, ready for push and start. It's Delta 1444, Kennedy ground, push back, approved, expect runway four left for your high speed getaway to Boston. And just a friendly reminder, information, Papa is current. Contact tower on 119.1 when you're all buttoned up and ready to take the skies. Watch out for those tugs, they have a mind of their own. Okay, pushback approved uh, for our high-speed getaway to Boston. Um, we do have information, Papa, and we'll uh, watch out for those tugs, said Delta 1444. Okay, so let's get this show on the road. You may disconnect. Okay, sir. Clear to disconnect. And there we go. So now we've got the tug moving away. We seem like we're ready to go apart from this tree growing out the delta uh, which is random um, so we will then call for a taxi Delta 1444 ready to taxi Delta 1444 Kennedy Tower taxi to runway 13 left via Kilo Alpha uniform Bravo uniform okay uh, taxi to runway 13 left via Kilo Alpha uniform Bravo uniform Delta 1443 